Hello everyone. In this video, we'll create email verification and confirmation system in ASP.NET Core MVC using Google SMTP server. We'll create this to implement forget password feature in our app. So before starting, let's see the demo. When users forget their password and try to reset the password by click on forget password link, email verification will open. Here, their email address will be verified on server side and if user's email is found in the database, a reset password link will be sent to their email inboxes. By clicking on that link, users can access the change password page. Without the link, this page cannot be accessed. Now a user can enter the new password. If password changes successfully, users will be redirected to the login page. So now, let's implement it. I have already created an ASP.NET Core project with custom role-based authorization. It's available on GitHub. Its video and source codes link will be mentioned in the description. For now, I'll use this project. Next, we need to create app password for our email address which we want to use for sending emails. For that, go to this page. Link will be available in the description. In order to create app password, you first have to enable the two-factor authentication. So, make sure it's enabled. Next, click on this link. Now, we need to log in for verification. Here, enter the title of the app. It can be random. We need to save this password. So, copy and save it. Now go to project and open app settings.json file. Here, create an email settings section. Inside it, create from property and pass sender email address. Then create SMTP server property and pass this link. Then create port and pass this number. Then create username and pass sender email address. Then create password and pass the app password which we just created. Now we need to create model of it. So create model class named email settings. Inside it, create SMTP server property of string type. Then create port property of int type. Then create sender name, sender email, and sender password properties of string type. Now we need to create email service class to send emails. So first, create class named iEmailService. Turn this class to an interface. Inside it, create method of task type named sendEmailAsync and set to email, subject, and body as parameters. Now, create an email service class. Inherit this class from iEmail service class and implement the interface. Inside it, create iConfiguration property. Then create constructor of this class and initialize this property inside it to implement dependency injection. Now inside send email async method, create from variable and initialize it with from property of email settings from app settings.json file using configuration. Then create SMTP server variable and initialize it with SMTP server property. Then create port and initialize it with port property and also wrap it with int.parse method to convert it to int format. Then create username and initialize it with username. Then create password and initialize it with password. Next, create message variable and initialize with mail message method and pass from to email, subject, and body properties to it. Then set message dot is body HTML to true. Then create var client variable with using keyword and initialize it with new SMTP client and pass SMTP server and port properties to it. Inside it, set credentials to new network credentials and pass username and password to it. And also set enable SSL to true. Then use await client.send mail async method and pass message property to it. With this email service class is complete. Now, we need to register this email service in our app. For that, open program file. Above build method, use builder.services.configure method of email settings. Then pass builder.configuration.get section method and pass email settings to it. It is the name of email settings section in JSON file. Then use builder.services.add transient method and register email service interface and class in it. 
Now, open change password view model. Inside it, add required token property of string type. Now, open change password view. Inside it, create an input field in form and set its type to hidden and set ASP4 to token. This hidden input field will handle the token. Now, we need to create a new page to display the email send message. For that, create a view named email sent. Copy the code of verify email page and paste here. Remove the form, title and models. Then set page title. Change the page heading. Then display the email sent message. Then create an anchor tag which redirects to login page. Now open account controller. Here, add HTTP get annotation. Then create an I action result type method named email sent and inside it, return view. Then scroll up and add email service property of I email service. Then initialize this property in the constructor. Then go to verify email method with post annotation. Remove this block of code. Then create user property and initialize it with find by email async method and pass email to it. Then use if statement to check if user is null. Inside it, return error message. Then create result token property and initialize it with user manager dot generate password reset token async method and pass user to it. Then create reset link property and initialize it with URL dot action method and pass the name of the page you want to redirect. I want to redirect to change password page, so I entered the name of the action, change password, then add controller which have this action. In my case, it's account controller. Then create a new object. Inside it, set email to model.email and token to reset token. And then pass request.scheme. Then create subject property and initialize it with a string value. Then create body property and initialize it with formatted string and pass reset link inside it. Then call email service dot send email async method and pass model dot email subject and body to it. And finally, return redirect to action method and pass email send action and account controller to it. Then go to change password method with get annotation. Inside it, remove this code. Then rename this parameter to email and add new parameter named token because these are the names of the properties which we want to fetch from the URL. Inside it, use if statement to check if either of these parameters are empty or null. Inside it, return redirect to action method to redirect to verify email page. Then create model property and initialize it with new change password view model object. Inside it, initialize email with email parameter and token with token parameter then return view and pass model to it. We created input field in the view for this token property. Then go to change password post method. Remove this code. Then create user property and initialize it with find by email async method and pass email to it. Then use if statement to check if user is null. Inside it, return view with model. Then create reset result variable and initialize it with user manager dot reset password async method and pass user, token, and new password to it. Then use if statement to check is reset result is not succeeded. Inside it, use for each loop to iterate through the errors. Inside loop, add these errors to model state. Then use else block, and inside it, return redirect to action method to redirect to login page. And finally, return view with model. With this, our code is complete. Now run the app to test it. Our app ran without any errors. Now open email verification page. Here, enter the email. It will now check whether user exists in the database or not. If user is found, it will send the email. And we are redirected to email sent page, which means email is sent. So now let's check the inbox. And we have received the email with reset password subject. Let's open it. Here we can see the reset password link. Let's open it and we are redirected to the change password page. An email field is already filled because email and token are picked from the URL. Now let's enter the new password. 
and we are redirected to login page which means password has been changed successfully. Now, let's try to log in with new password. And we have logged in successfully and we can also access the restricted pages. With this, this video is complete. You can download the source code of this project. Link is available in the description. Also thanks for watching. See you in the next video.